Hi Robin with OxyDry and uh, today I'm in my living room in my and um, we're gonna do a little interesting comparison I think and uh, thanks to my uh, my little helper over here Mr. Billy hey Billy say hello <laughs> and his uh, partner in crime Jesse James who I think is outside and um, we had a little catastrophe this morning um, I'm gonna do this in a separate video. You can see the uh, the hallway here, all covered in muddy footprints. It's actually <laughs> caused by they go tearing around outside, and there's uh, some gravel over here to the right. Here's Jesse James, and uh, you can see the they, they kick the gra they tear around on here and. And they go around behind the shed there, and I used to have, right around behind the shed, I used to have some mulch over there. I did pull it out of there, mostly uh, it's gone, but there's still the, you know, the black powder from the mulch that is all over there. And so they, they go racing around there, and their feet, they come racing in the house, their feet are just black, and that's what's been going on. And so I'm going to go and put some gravel behind there today. And so that's what the source of that black it's basically, I guess, um, sawdust, really fine sawdust. And then <laughs> a little earlier, um, Billy had jumped up on the couch, and the couch was just black. They just gave it a wipe down and cleaned it up. But um, the purpose of the video today is uh, I thought it'd be interesting to um, just see what's happening on this carpet. Now, I cleaned the carpet about a week ago, and since then, of course, we've had all this activity, and, you know, we're in here every day, obviously. This is where our TV is. And um, the doggies come racing in and out of here all the time, and then we get down on the floor and throw a ball back and forth, and then they're all often wrestling and fighting with each other, rolling around on the floors. And uh, so I vacuumed this carpet a week ago, so here we are Sunday now. It's been a week since it's been vacuumed. And um, so what we're gonna do is I'm gonna vacuum with the hush tone. And what I'm, my, my intention is to kind of duplicate what I do when, I, uh, when I'm cleaning a carpet, which is I pre-vacuum a carpet. Then I clean it with my rotary using either fiber pads and Iron Man pads or just an Iron Man pad depending on the condition. Uh, and this is a carpet that has been cleaned, well, quite a number of times. It's been only cleaned with the OxyDry process. And one of the myths, one of the things that people will say about the Oxy or bonnet cleaning type methods or pad cleaning, whether it be OP or, or rotary, is that they're not deep cleaning systems. And that's actually, actually untrue. And uh, I'm going to show that in a second. And um, even the Carpet and Rug Institute, CRI.com, on their list of uh, cleaning methods, they do have uh, methods that are considered uh, deep cleaning listed and included on that are OP machines. They have Orbot on there, which is OP, obviously, and I think the uh, Vibe version of it is on there as well, which is an identical oscillation anyway. Uh, and um, they even have rotary machines on there and all classified as deep cleaning as long as you're doing the system the right way. And one of the things you want to obviously do, first of all, is do a thorough pre-vacuuming. So I thought it'd be interesting to do a little comparison here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to vacuum this carpet with the hush tone, and I'm going to vacuum it like I would normally vacuum when I'm cleaning in somebody's house. And, uh, and then I'm going to vacuum it again to duplicate my, because I normally will vacuum, do the cleaning with the rotary, and then post vacuum. So I'm gonna do, I'm not gonna do the cleaning this time, but I'm gonna do the pre-vacuuming, and then I'm gonna vacuum it again as if I'm doing a post vacuuming. And then I'm gonna take the workhorse, and I'm gonna vacuum it with the workhorse. Now the workhorse is an excellent vacuum. Um, some consider this to be the most powerful vacuum out there. Um, whether it is or not, I can't say for sure, but it certainly is impressive because you can actually see, in many cases, you'll actually see um, debris and dust and whatever entering into the canister as you vacuum, and it's quite quite the thing to see. So now that'll tell me whether or not I've been leaving a lot of 
junk in behind with the hush tone and the hush tone is a very powerful vacuum i think it's actually the most powerful vacuum i've ever used uh so we're going to compare i'll vacuum it with this vacuum as if i was doing a cleaning and then we're going to vacuum with that vacuum and see if it's leaving anything behind i, I expect there will there be something because i'm sure you'll always get something out of a carpet when you vacuum um that would make sense to me anyway so let's give it a try so i'm going to vacuum first of all with the hush tone and i'll do a nice thorough vacuuming and i do have an empty bag in here so we're you know and an even keel and obviously the filter and the um workhorse is um clean and oh by the way for those of you who don't know the the workhorse is actually the very first um dyson vacuum ever made this is mr dyson's very first cyclonic vacuum it's a it's a more primitive one than what he's making now, but um, many consider it to be the most powerful one. Um, it's a kind of a simplistic machine, um, and I did use it for a while, but I chose to not use it because I don't like having to clean out that can every time. And I found that the, I think that the uh, hush tone is just a better suited uh, for my purposes, and so that's why I, I switched over to the hush tone. So let's vacuum and see what happens. Okay. When I do a pre-vacuum, I usually am very thorough and very methodical and very uh, careful in how I pre-vacuum because I realize how very important uh, the pre-vacuuming step is. Uh, so I'll spend more time pre-vacuuming than I do actually uh, using my carpet cleaning machine, the rotary. In fact, uh, even my pre-vacuuming will take more time and then I clean with the rotary, and then of course I do a post vacuuming. Post vacuuming is usually done faster because uh, all I'm primarily doing at that point is using the vacuum to power groom, as it were. So you see how I'm overlapping both uh, as I go forward and back, but as I go side to side, I'm also overlapping. On the um, Hush Tone uh, Hoover uh, website, they rate this vacuum at 150 CFM. Um, I'm not positive if that's actually true, but that's what they claim anyway, so. Which is actually really impressive because very few vacuums have much more than 100 CFM. But it sure feels powerful. And it has a, one of the handy things about it is it has two power settings. And it's on the high power setting now. I, I normally uh, pre-vacuum on the high power setting. So, one of the things about um, that is often said about uh, the rotary cleaning is that it only will uh, clean the top third of the fibers. In fact, on the OxyFresh, website that's one of the things they say how they say uh, a couple of things they say that are blatantly untrue is they'll say that uh, a rotary machine will flatten the car carpet fibers which is absolutely untrue and they also say because they say it doesn't pile left which is again untrue rotaries are very effective at the thing pile assuming you're using uh, the right attachment on the bottom and they also say it only cleans about one third, up, one third of the fiber, which is untrue, depending on what attachment you're using and what type of carpet you're cleaning. Um, but when we're cleaning, properly cleaning with an OP or a rotary, part of the proper cleaning process is to um, do a proper and very thorough pre and post vacuuming. And many companies, steam cleaning companies, and OxyFresh, um, rarely will do a pre-vacuum. I, I think that OxyFresh, what I've understood about OxyFresh is they, all they do is uh, rely on the, the brushes of their CRB machine, counter-revolving brush machine, to um, 
pull out you know junk from the carpet but that's not going to pull out the fine dust that's down in the bottom of the carpet it just it just simply can't there's no airflow there's i mean in a, in a, a bristles of a brush aren't going to absorb and transfer anything from the carpet fiber whereas a, with a op or a bonnet machine or what i call soil extraction transfer technology that will be absorbing and transferring the soil and stains and even uh, fine dust out of the carpet but the the vacuuming is very critical to the actual process with doxy dry and anybody else who's doing a vlm system correctly and if you're not using a vacuum on the carpet and again most steam cleaners don't and uh According to uh, the uh, on the uh, Oxyfresh website, they they tell how they clean the carpet. They don't say anything about vacuuming. They talk about how they they just basically spray the car the, spray the carpet and then put the machine over the carpet and that's it. And the machine is just is just the brushes. So there's no uh, drawing up of the fine particulate soil out of the carpet and bottom. There's, I mean, they'll pick up debris and fibers and hair and, and, and stuff like that and that looks impressive for sure but that's not proper cleaning now you'll notice the the pitch of the vacuum has, has dropped because now i'm a, a vacuuming at the lower power setting as if i was doing my post vacuuming so normally i would have it at the lower power setting and at the lower power setting this vacuum to me feels like a standard vacuum would like most vacuums would have the power that this has at the lower power setting, but it also has the higher power setting, which is right here. I'll turn it up. Here it, it accelerates, the RPM increases, and it increases the airflow and the suction. But for post vacuuming, that's typically what I will do, is I'll have it on the lower setting. So when I'm doing a carpet, I'm not um, I'm not trying to be fast about it. I, I uh, schedule myself that I you know take the time in most cases to just really be thorough. There's my little guy over there, that's Billy, <laughs> and I really like being able to take my time. Oh, here he comes! See those great big feet? They get all covered in dirt and mud and. Lots of fun. Oh, now he's leaving. And you notice this carpet, which has been 10 years I've been living on this carpet, has no sign of soil buildup. There is no permanent stains on this carpet. It's only ever been cleaned with the oxidar process. So <laughs> if this carpet wasn't being properly and thoroughly clean on a regular basis with the oxy dry process then it would be looking pretty pretty bad by now the soil would have built up in the bottom people often say uh people that don't understand what's happening here might say that uh you know carpet can be cleaned like this a few times because it's supposedly only a maintenance system but every few cleanings you need to get it steam cleaned to properly remove the deep down soil that just builds up well this carpet is never Let's turn on some lights here. This carpet has never... Uh, turn this thing on up here. There we go. This carpet has never been uh, steam cleaned. So, let's try the workhorse. Get this thing out of the way. So, what do you think is going to happen? Is the workhorse going to pick up I think we're on a medium oh, hang on a second I got a medium setting here I think it's been a while since I used this actually and there we go so it'll be interesting to see what happens let me just double check yep that's what was moving So 
So I'm just going to take my time again. Go over the entire carpet. And we'll see if I pick anything up. Or did the hush tone thoroughly remove what was in the carpet that was built up over the last, well, last week anyway. So the nice thing about using a hush tone is that if there is a bunch of junk in the carpet in one area, you can actually see it coming into the pan, and then you can slow down and go over that area until you see it stop coming. But um, my thinking, I mean, I, I certainly realized that as I was using it, when I used it for, uh, I don't know, six months or so. Uh, but I, then when I, when I thought it through and I realized that if I'm using a really powerful vacuum and it's going to be picking up most, if not all, of the soil just by going over it like I'm doing right now, then there's not really an advantage. So I think it might be overthinking what we're doing here, is what I'm trying to say. That as long as you've got a really good vacuum and you use it carefully and slowly and... and uh, consistently, you notice how I'm overlapping and everything, then I think you're going to be getting out pretty much all of the particular soil that you can anyway. So, am I going to be uh, picking anything up into the canister? <laughs> Now we're going to go along this way, like I did before. Turn around, i got to do right over here. One pass, now I'm going to do a second pass. I'll try it on the lower setting, see if that makes any difference at all. That's the lowest setting this has, so I would normally not expect to do that, put that setting on this type of carpet. We'll see if I can, if it makes any difference. I can feel it working a little bit more. So if this carpet was building up with soil and, you know, skin and, and junk because of not being thoroughly and, you know, deeply clean, then we would be seeing it in this vacuum. I guarantee it. You would be seeing this pan uh, filling up with uh, dust, skin, grit, sand, dog hair. <laughs> So is it happening? I can see in the canister, by the way. There's something in there. Is there going to be a, an inch or two in there? Is there going to be a quarter inch? How much do you think is in there, guys? Is deep down dirt building up in the bottom of my carpet? or not. Okay, I'm just taking my time, overlapping. Oop, there's my little... Hey, Billy. There he is. <laughs> He's a lot of fun, that guy. But he's messy. <laughs> was your uh, was your bad brother? 
I think the other guy doesn't like vacuum, so he's uh, not usually around when I'm doing things like this. Okay, back over to the beginning. Landing spot right here. I'll do it at a different angle. I'm gonna step down off the steps, and the dogs come flying into the living room, <laughs> and they're chasing each other. So let's turn it off, and we'll take a look and see how much I picked up in the uh, in the workhorse. There's a little bit of fluff in there. Can you see that? But there's virtually nothing in there. Now, isn't that interesting? Now, actually, that was exactly what I expected. But anyway, so that's interesting. Um, so there's a very tiny amount of fluff in there, and that's it. So clearly, there's not a buildup of soil happening in the bottom of this carpet, and... Uh, and that, I think, is pretty much proof of it. So uh, now I'm going to end this video and I'm going to do another one where I'm going to deal with the, the dust in the hallway over there, the, the um, oh, mulch from the doggies. And we'll do it a little bit different way. So anyway, thank you for watching and have a good day.